Good morning, I'm Grant Flora, and it's time for the Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. With me this morning is student Zach Bowen and boys head basketball coach John Everingham. How are we, everybody? Good morning. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving and and, uh, getting back to some normal routines here in the next few days. Yeah, I'm doing good, Grant. How about you? I'm doing great. Had a great Thanksgiving um, and ready to talk some basketball here. So today we're going to start off by breaking down the first half of the season opener against Fairfield. Then we'll progress into the second half. And then we'll look ahead to Angola um, later on. And then we'll finally look at the future of the schedule uh, and start discussing that. So, Coach, we're going to start with our first half against Fairfield. And my first question was how from the opening tip, the intensity was high from both teams and shots were falling. And by the end of the quarter, you finished with 21 points on the board. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what allowed your team to not only suppress nerves, but also come out yeah. with guns a-blazing? Yeah, we do have some returning guys, and, and we do have some experience. and, and um, But it, it just doesn't, you know, that, that really doesn't come into, into play maybe until a little later in the season just because, you know, it's always exciting. <clears throat> you know, the nerves are going, and, and I don't know about you guys, but, you know, even for me, I've coached in probably 250 games, and, and uh, man, I was I was feeling it. I was a little nervous, and and those are good feelings to have. Have I was trying to, you know, talk to the guys before the game about in, embracing those feelings, and because there's not too many things in life uh, that that give you those feelings. You get so nervous and anxious, and and then you're asking, you know, 16, 17, 18 year old uh, teenagers to go out there and perform in, th- in front of thousands of people. And so it's very difficult uh, to get prepared for that. Uh, even if you've been through it before, again, like I have, as, even as a coach, it's, it's hard to go out there and perform. And so I think probably the biggest surprise early in the game is how well uh, the, both teams performed. You know, we, we were, it, like I said, after the game, it was like the, the fireworks went off early. The, the finale just, I mean, guys were hitting shots. Uh, usually what you see is, is a lot of mistakes, you know, turnovers, uh, bad passes and uh, air balls, you know, guys are just so nervous that they're throwing the ball all over the place and moving too fast. And maybe you saw a little bit of that, but man, uh, I thought both teams come out uh, ready to play almost like in midseason form, like you guys said. And uh, it certainly created, you know, uh, an environment that uh, hopefully, you know, people enjoyed. We even at the, I think at the end of the first quarter, one of the Fairfield players threw in a half court shot. Um, so that first quarter, man, it was really exciting. We came out, shot the ball really well. They shot the ball really well. And uh, um, it, it really was exciting. Coach, I kind of want to bounce off Grant's question there about the shooting. You know, it just seemed like all shots were falling with ease for both teams, like you were saying. So what can you say about Wallace's overall shooting performance in that first half? What did you think of that? Yeah, you know, the, there was some big question marks we had talked about before the game and, and uh, how, you know, they're – inexperienced players were going to come out and perform and um and then some of our new guys you know especially Colin Zebarth you know coming out uh, I think he scored 11 points in that at first quarter and so you know coaches that that watch that other people that watch that are Wawasi fans that watch that they're certainly they got a taste of what could be you know from our top three you know scores with Miles uh, Maddox and Colin Zebarth you know, being able to put it put it in the hoop, we, twenty one points in a quarter is incredible, um, and and we really were on the verge of of grabbing a ten point lead, but we just couldn't close out on no mast um, in that first quarter, and he knocked down some threes. Yeah, so you mentioned the half court buzzer beater at the end of that first quarter that Fairfield had it trimmed the lead down to three. Um, so how was that shot a momentum shift that ultimately led to the Falcons flipping the script in the second quarter? Yeah, I think you probably saw saw me get a little excited about that, and and uh, you know going back and watching film, it wasn't even close. It, it was uh, it was well before the buzzer went off, but um, I wasn't sure at the time, and and I immediately kind of started waving my hands like it's no good, it's no good. But actually, as it turns out, it was. So um, um, it was a good play. It was an exciting play by there. Uh, but we were up, I think, 21-15. Um, we were looking to hold the ball for the last shot of the quarter. So when you're up six um, at the end of the first quarter, what we'd like to do in that situation and what we've been working on, because I think it's really key to our season, 
is controlling, you know, possessions at the end of the quarter. And and we were out of sync just a little bit. Uh, we couldn't get into what we wanted to get in, and we ended up taking a shot that uh, wasn't one that we wanted to take. So you're up six. You're hoping to maybe score a two or a three to go up eight or nine. And as it turns out, we go to the second quarter only up three. That was a huge, huge momentum shift that kind of took us out of some of the things we probably would have liked to do in the in the second quarter. Uh, but you give credit to them. They knocked down the shots. They weathered the storm. And we came out uh, guns a-blazing and uh, really put it to them. But somehow they hung in there just long enough. They probably should have been down at least six, maybe eight or nine, uh, going into that second quarter, and, and we go over to the benches, and we're, all, we're only up three. That's a, that's a big momentum shift. Coach, I'd like to speak a little bit on that momentum shift. It seemed like Fairfield's defense really picked up there in the second quarter. Like, they were just all over the ball everywhere. So what do you think about Fairfield's defense and how you could have countered that a little bit different? Well, we – Here's the thing. They they clearly were focused on on Miles and Maddox, and we we stopped film on a couple occasions where, um, you know, most teams, and you got to give credit to Coach Heinen and, and how he played those two guys, um, but they were face guarding them basically almost the whole game, just trying to make somebody else beat them, and we stopped film on on a couple occasions where the ball would be on one side of the floor, and then. You know, the twins are on the other side of the floor and they're being face guarded. There's no help side whatsoever. And so the things that we will have to adjust to is our ability to cut and get open. And then also, you know, other guys that, that need to have the confidence to, to make straight line drives to the basket um, because there's no help side. And so uh, those, are, those are some of the problems that we're going to give teams that really focus on stopping one or two of our players. We have three, four, five, six guys uh, maybe that can really do some damage. And so um, I thought we relied a little bit too much on on trying to find Miles, and he was kind of ball hawking, uh, you know, instead of cutting and, and getting some other guys open. Um, and so, you know, when you're being face guarded, and, and that's probably going to happen a lot this year, you got to become a good screener. And you got to go set up opportunities for your teammates uh, as well as creating some for your own. But um, our offense was more of it's your turn, no, it's my turn, and isolations, and it really wasn't a team concept, and it wasn't in a selfish uh, behavior. Uh, it was just that's what we thought we needed to do to win the game. What we need to kind of progress to is is a, a team concept and, and really doing a better job of cutting and screening and opening up opportunities for other players. Yeah, well, Coach, to start the game, you started the lineup that was a bit of a small ball lineup. Um, you didn't really have a true big guy down low, and then you're able to bring Colin Robertson off the bench, who gave you that sort of presence. But um, kind of, what was the decision there? How did that How did that process work? Well, Carson, you know, he's come a long way, and and uh, last year being a, a main player on our, our JV team, uh, working his tail off, you know, in the off season, and and really trying to get better at some of his deficiencies. Uh, we knew he could he could score the basketball. He's got some offensive skill and. And um, this year he came in and really was just rebounding the ball um, on the offensive end and the defensive end, and he made it very difficult for us not to start him. And so, you know, it's kind of how it works. You, you, get, you judge players on their player performance, and certainly there are other attributes that you have to uh, be able to display if you're in our program, you know, doing well in the classroom, on and off the court, uh, having a good attitude, um, having a genuine love for – you know, your teammates, and Carson just played all of those things and, and just left no doubt that, that he was a guy that should be in that starting lineup. And so, um, you know, we had a, a little bit of a team meeting and we talked about overcoming adversity, and Carson's a great story um, in terms of, you know, he was down and out a little bit last year, and, and um, um, he came back in the summertime and, and really had a great summer. Um, and, then, and then to start the preseason and then into, you know, practices – um, again, he just he didn't leave me with much choice uh, uh, to start him, and so I'm really proud of him. And also, you got to give credit to Colin, you know, Robertson, a guy who's uh, normally used to starting, you know, basketball games, but um, he came off the bench and gave us some really good minutes. Um, you know, we got a couple offensive rebound putbacks, and and so you know, right now we got six guys in our rotation that we feel really comfortable with. We got two or three others uh, beyond that. 
um, that are just going to take a, just a little bit of time to develop. And so I think what you'll see is probably that starting lineup, you know, change a little bit, you know, throughout the course of the beginning of the season. Well, Coach, there was a lot of stuff jam-packed into that first half. It was a really good first half, especially for a season opener. Obviously, you had the half-court buzzer beater at the end of the first quarter. Um, a lot of scoring at 31-28 to 28 was the halftime score. Uh, so really just a high-energy, high-level first half. Um, it was a joy to watch, joy to call, um, and you, both teams looked really solid. Yeah, I felt so too. I, I, again, for, for an early season game, um, I, I really hope the fans enjoyed it. We, it was a good atmosphere. I think um, we do a pretty good job here at Wawasee of creating uh, an environment that's fun for kids. You know, the music and um, the hype video, the, the lights out and the, the screens coming down. I, I really want our young guys to see that and think, man, I, I really want to do that someday, whether it's a, a sixth grader, you know, watching with their, their mom and dad up in the stands or, or JV players or, or whoever it might be. Um, to really see that and want to be a part of that because um, it is something that's special. It doesn't happen at every gym that you go to. And, and I think in, in talking to some people in the summertime and, and even into, you know, our school year was I, I just don't know if there's another place like that around here that can create that sort of excitement, you know, for a game. And so it's our responsibility to perform a little better on the floor uh, but we certainly have some of the other things that uh, that we really like and, and make our our experience special. Yeah, Coach, I like you're saying that the atmosphere just felt different, especially for a first game. You aren't expecting that big of an atmosphere. But it just seemed like both sides of like the student sections, everything. The atmosphere was just different, and it was really good. So, what can you say about? I like you were kind of saying the atmosphere. What can you say overall about the student section, even? Yeah, I, I, again, I, there's a lot of things going on. And, and the, the one unique thing about Wawa C is that we're including our, our radio TV students. Obviously, you guys are up there calling the games, but there's other students that, that are working back in the engineering room that are changing camera angles, that are working on audio. Um, we have culinary students up in the upper deck club uh, serving food, making and serving food. And so there's a lot going on um, that we've created uh, here that that make it kind of a special experience, and not just for the fans um, or the or the parents or anything like that. It's cool for the kids. I think that's something that they'll look back upon and think, "Man, we really had it going, um, and it was really fun, you know, to play um, at home." And I I think the other thing too is when opposing teams come in, they're they're jacked up to play us too. You know, they like playing here because they know we're going to have fans here. We they know that there's going to be events going on. And it just creates an environment that you want to play in. Yeah, the atmosphere, kind of like you said, it felt like a midseason or even a postseason game. You combine the level of play uh, with just all the fans and the student sections and everything. And kind of like you were saying, as great as it is, you know, you want to compete, you want to win, but it's also a really good experience uh, for kids. You want to be able to look back and look back at your high school years and really just kind of uh, look back fondly about those memories that you made. I would agree with that, 100%. All right, well, coming up, we'll dive into the second half of that Fairfield season opener, uh, and that's going to be that's gonna be a good topic to discuss. So more Coach's Corner basketball show coming up on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show here on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. I'm student Grant Flora alongside student Zach Bowen and head basketball coach John Everingham. Coach, we just broke down the first half of your season opener against Fairfield, but now it's time to address what happened after halftime. Yeah, we, we clearly were happy that we, um, you know, in some aspects of the game that uh, um, we were where we were at. Uh, we didn't have a real good second quarter there, but we were only down three going into that second half and and um, feel like we were in a pretty good place if we could just make a couple adjustments. And, and um, you know, I I get a pretty good read on, on teams when we come out at halftime and, and um, um, I didn't get a great feel, you know, when guys were coming over to the bench and maybe tried to give a spirited talk leading into that third quarter. But but for whatever reason, I, I don't really know what it is. We came out a little flat in that third quarter, and and uh, uh, Fairfield took advantage. Coach, as you kind of mentioned there, in that second half, you know, you did come out a little cold. Fairfield was just firing all cylinders. 
what do you think happened to cause that? Well, Fairfield presents some problems, and and clearly, you know, if if we were, we, we knew that uh, they had knocked down some threes in in the first quarter, second quarter, and you know, we got to decide to take away something, you know, and we started, you know, closing out a little bit better on their shooters, and and w- which left you know opportunities for them on the inside, and so. Um, with Mast and, and um, Tyson Fry, you know, on the inside, uh, being able to catch the ball and, and score easily in the post, um, it creates some problems when teams have guys that are knocking down shots. Even um, Hofer even knocked down, I think he was two for three, and, and they had two guys I think were two for three and then five for six, and they were 10 for 16 overall from three-point range. And then in combination with that, they did a good job of getting the ball inside and scoring easy buckets. And they just kind of uh, backed our guys down into an, an area where we had trouble stopping them. And so um, that third quarter, really, uh, I was worried. You know, obviously we were down maybe 10, 12 points and I think even 14 at one time um, because we didn't know what to take away. And so they were knocking down shots from the outside and then they were scoring on the inside. And that's a nice combination to have when you have that inside-out game uh, really makes teams kind of make a choice. Are you going to try to take care of the inside or are you going to take care of the outside? And and obviously if they're doing one, you try to you try to knock them dead with the other one. And so Fairfield successfully did that and put us in a really bad spot where we had to come out and try to start pressuring them. And so I think it was maybe towards the end of the third quarter we switched up our defense a little bit and tried to get them to turn the ball over, uh, which clearly was also un- unsuccessful. And so that part of the game, when we started bringing some pressure, it didn't surprise me that we, we were not real good in that area. We just haven't been real good in previous years. We don't have, you know, maybe the personnel to turn people over. We're going to be, we're going to have to be very strategic in how we use that pressure. And, and so I wasn't really upset with that portion of the game when we tried to pressure them and, and turn them over because I didn't think we were real strong in that area. Yeah, that kind of leads into one of my questions, how like toward the end of the game, fourth quarter, you were down and you need to turn Fairfield over and try and come back in the game. And so you ran that press and you tried to uh, get some good pressure on Fairfield. And you were able to do that a couple of times. You were able to turn Fairfield over. Uh, but is this something you might be able to adopt later in the season, maybe uh, in, in maybe the beginning of the game or middle of the game? Yeah, I, I said you know, just a little bit ago that it's going to have to be strategic. And uh, possession here, too, we're just not quite deep enough. We're not quite athletic. athletic enough to you know do it for longer stretches like we had to we had to do it from the end of the third basically through the end of the game and that's probably how they got so many points because we were fouling them uh you, again you got to give them credit they were handling the ball and they were knocking down free throws when you get a lead like that um that's what you have to do you have to be able to handle the ball and you have to be able to to knock down free throws and so um again they were kind of weathering the storm i don't think their coach or their players or their fans or anybody really felt, you know, overly confident when they're they when they're up nine, eight, nine, ten points because they know we're pretty explosive, uh, like we showed in the first quarter. So um, nobody was real comfortable, but they did a good job of handling the basketball. And then they knocked down. I don't know what they were for in the fourth quarter from the free throw line, but overall they were twenty two for twenty seven. So they just weren't giving us opportunities to cut that lead to six or five or four. And I'm telling you, the pressure, when you have a lead and then you lose it, uh, it becomes much, much different. It would have been a different ball game if we could have cut it to, to five or four. We had a couple threes. I think Carson had a three, um, Colin Robertson had a three, and Miles had a three in, in consecutive possessions where we didn't knock down one of those. That probably would have brought it down to about six or five. And I would have liked to have seen how they would have reacted, you know, only having a five-point lead instead of a ten-point lead. But again, you give credit to the other team. They knocked down their free throws. They took care of the basketball. Um, they also got a couple huge offensive rebounds where we finally got a stop, made them shoot quickly, and then they grabbed an offensive rebound, put it back in the hoop. So, um, you know, again, ultimately kind of give credit to your opponent and, and uh, uh, kind of move on. Coach, kind of want to throw something out there about their coach, Fairfield's coach. It seemed like when they were starting getting shaky, I realized you you did it too. Where your team was starting to get shaky, you'd pull those players to the side and kind of talk to them when you kind of have a break. And I just wanted to say, what can that do to a player when you pull them to the side like that and give them a talk like, hey, you need to calm down here and, you know, lock back in? Yeah, they made a turn up. The first time we pressed them, I think Hofer threw it right out of bounds. And 
when he caught the ball, I could I could hear Coach Heinen calling timeout, and he just didn't quite get it quick enough. And so he knew that he needed to have a conversation and probably remind them of their, you know, execution on the on the press offense, you know, for them. But we did get one turnover early, just couldn't capitalize. You know, we ran ran a side out of bounds play and and um, um, probably threw it to a player. I, I would have been our second choice, but. Um, we just didn't capitalize, you know, when we had opportunities when they did turn the ball over. Um, but, but certainly there are times when, you know, guys get a little flustered on the floor or they, they just need a second to, to relax, grab a drink of water, you give them a little coaching. And sometimes that coaching um, is one that you're just building them up and saying, it's okay, you're doing just fine. And when you get back out there, it's, it's going to be okay. Other times, you know, you may have to kick them in the behind and say, hey, let's wake up and start doing the things that we know that you can do. Um, so either way, you know, getting a chance to take a player out or sub them out um, um, is, is, can be very beneficial. Yeah, Coach, you were able to bring some players off the bench uh, that really contributed to your team, including some players that saw some JV minutes. Uh, what can you tell us about some of those JV freshman games that really uh, yeah. you liked? Yeah, um, we are using, you know, um, clearly what it, what the freshman team and the JV team is meant for. It's developmental, you know, and so we want to get guys minutes and in, in positions where they can be successful. And and so if that's playing freshman when you're a freshman, or or you're playing JV, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, or junior, um, we want guys to go down there and and have those experiences that they can develop. And so. Um, I feel good about the first week uh, in terms of our development. We had a freshman game on Monday night at Columbia City, and and to be honest with you, we saw a lot of players out there that hadn't really played a whole lot on the floor when they were in middle school, and they got an opportunity to kind of experience that. Um, we had two um, kind of uh, uh, players that have experience in terms of playing a lot. That was Davis Everingham and Michael Wilson on that freshman team, and Jaden Stahl has, has got a little bit of experience. Easton Rollins got a little experience coming back. Um, but we were awfully shaken and nervous <laughs> over at Columbia City. Uh, we fell behind 20-2 to two at halftime, and I was really proud of Coach Wilson and, and our freshman team. Um, we came all the way back against what I think is probably a pretty solid Columbia City team. We came all the way back and cut that lead to eight, um, late in the fourth quarter and, and ended up losing, I think, by 10 points. Um, but we scored 27 points in the second half. And, and what you could see in that game is, is a guy like Michael Wilson, who's six foot five, six seven wingspan. He looks like he's about eight or nine years old, and he's got a lot of growing to do, and he's going to be an exciting player for us. But you, you could see in the first half where, you know, uh, in his development, he was just catching the ball, throwing it back out, and then started to realize he's – He's good, and and he'd catch the ball and turn and loft it up at the basket, nice and soft, and it would go through the hoop. And he started thinking, "Well, I think I can do this every time I catch the ball." And so, um, I was very pleased with our development on a freshman game, and then also, you know, looking at a JV game. You know, um, Micah got into the JV game. Davis got into that JV game after playing the freshman, um, and then we got a series of sophomores and juniors um, that I also feel good about, and some guys that. Um, I thought had pretty good performances out there uh, is another freshman that you're going to be seeing a lot of is Nolan Holsworth. And Nolan led the, led the team, I think, with 10 or 12 points, um, had a couple beautiful assists um, going towards the basket where he just uh, gave it to a guy for a wide open layup, had a nice, uh, some nice pull-ups there. Um, and um, uh, Weston Hofford even got to play a couple quarters down there on the JV. He was a good JV player for us last, last year, but we want to make sure he gets minutes. He's only a sophomore. Um, Braden Pike and Weston DeLong, you know, at the big guy spot. So um, I feel really good about the JV game. Um, even though we dropped that game, you certainly could look out there and see um, the development of the players and say, well, I think this player could be this player maybe when he gets to the varsity level. And so we're always evaluating whether we're watching a freshman game or a JV game. Um, but we did see some of those guys come off the bench. Nolan got in there, I think, for a minute or two. And uh, Weston Hoffert played uh, six or seven minutes for us off the bench. And so um, um, I think we played – we dressed ten guys, and nine of those guys got into the game. Um, so I think that's something that you'll continue to see grow um, as we move forward in our season. Coach, and that's what the season's all about is growing – 
Um, and my question for you is, what can you take from this Fairfield game and grow from that? Very good question, Zach. I was hoping you would ask something like that because we lost, right? No one likes to lose, and and um, and I mean no one, and probably no one more than me, and our our coaches um, and our players that that just hate losing. I mean it's it's probably a good quality to have, but it certainly eats at you. Um, uh, turkey didn't quite taste as good as uh, after a loss than it does after a, a first game win. But um, here's the thing. Whether you win or lose, the, the the great teams, the best teams, have the ability to get better. And so um, we watch film for a couple hours. Honestly, probably the longest film session I think I've ever had as a coach where we sat down and started breaking down. We only got through half the game in two hours. <laughs> half of the game in two hours. But we're looking at things that when, when guys were watching themselves on the, the film does not lie. Okay, when you're on When you're caught on film, it doesn't lie. And so when you're not making cuts and you're not making – plays that you normally make in practice but then in the first game you go out there and you don't do the things we've been doing in practice you know players sit there and go why why did I do that well it's called pressure and so when the pressure builds and when the excitement builds it's very difficult to kind of perform under pressure and and we didn't do a good enough job of that uh, executing on the offensive end and the defensive end we got a chance to show the guys that and so now we get a chance to kind of go back and I know we'll talk about it later um, get a chance to go back out against Angola and try to improve in one or two of those areas. And we will, I promise you that. Yeah, Coach, and overall, just a really solid game. I know the second half didn't go the way you wanted it to, but, but there were still a lot of great things to take away. Uh, and ultimately, as, as much as it hurts to lose, knowing that it's just the first game, there are a lot of big things to play for uh, later on in the season. Ultimately, you're going to be able to grow from this and be able to win some games down the stretch. We're going to get ready to go to our next segment where we're going to preview the matchup with Angola uh, later tonight. We'll be back with more Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show. I'm Grant Flora here with Zach Bowen and head coach John Everingham. And we just wrapped up our discussion about Tuesday night's matchup with the Fairfield Falcons. And so, Coach, to start this off, we're going to ask, what now? Like, after this game against Fairfield, after uh, you go home, what do you do? Well, <clears throat> we we don't really have to pick up the pieces. You know, that's kind of an easy thing to say, but there's there's not too many pieces to pick up, really, honestly. There, there's so many things that we did well. And so you you really try to hammer home the idea that, um, that we did do some things really, really well. And so it's just when you have five guys on the floor, you really got to be playing together as a unit. And um, I think those are things that are fixable. And so I've, I've coached some years where, um, you know, honestly, I talked a lot about during in the film session, we had a game against Manchester early in the season. This is probably five years ago. Ben Hoffert was our best player. Uh, we also had um, – um, J.D. Slayball, Josh Slayball, who was a, a pretty good player for us. And uh, we scored 28 points in that game. And I think we lost, you know, maybe 34 to 28 or something like that. Ben Hoffert had uh, 24 of our 28 points. And, and Josh Slayball had a, a, a running hook shot across the, the middle of the lane that went in. And he scored the other four points. And so... I was reminding those guys that look, we we don't have those issues like that. That was a different team. That was a different time, um, but we didn't have anybody that could score the basketball, and it really limited what we thought we could do um, on the floor to win basketball games with that particular team. We didn't have enough skill. We had great, great kids, and they battled and they fought, and they grinded. They worked together. They executed, um, but we had troubles turning the ball over. Um, we had troubles putting the ball in the basket. We our shooting percentages were horrific, and so you know some of the things that you can look at with this year's team is that that we can put the ball in the basket. We have skilled basketball players in our top six. We have skilled basketball players in our JV team. Uh, we got guys that that certainly can fulfill roles, and and also you know score the basketball. And so I I think scoring. You know, 64 points in a loss is something that you take a look at and like, okay, here's some things that we didn't do well, but here's some things we did do well. Here's some things that we we can improve upon. We got guys that can 
can put the ball in the basket. And we scored on a couple occasions go, uh, getting the ball to the basket. Carson had a couple of nice drives going to the basket, some easy layups, and and really trying to get uh, um, communicate with him and and also Peyton Felger, who is a, a veteran guy for us that – you know, those guys need to attack the basket. If there's no help side and these guys are really focused on stopping these other guys, we have enough skill to to drive the ball to the basket and score. And so I think, you know, in the upcoming games, we'd like to see those guys step up just a little bit and maybe take a few more shots and and really kind of put pressure on the defense. If they're going to do what what Fairfield did to us, then we got to make them pay. And so, um, so we want to talk about positives plenty and make sure that that our guys understand that that we do have a long way to go, and there's some things that we definitely need to work on on both ends of the floor, but we're not that far off. The things that we we we're not doing well, or we didn't do well, um, or that I saw in the preseason that were coming, um, those are things that are fixable. Um, we can fix those things. It's positioning, it's movement, it's cutting, and so it's it's kind of like a basketball IQ. Those are things that you can gain pretty quickly, whereas in other years. We had, we didn't have guys that could put the ball through the hoop, quite simply. And those were things that were not fixable immediately. That was going to take a long period of time uh, to get guys to the point where they could put it through the hoop, you know. So, um, you know, we did watch film, um, you know, on Wednesday morning. We did practice probably for 45 minutes and just kind of uh, worked out some of the bumps and bruises and stuff like that. But um, I feel good going into today and the things that, that – you know, the coaches and I watch film together. I watch film probably three times uh, of the game. And we make a list of all these things that I think we need to improve upon, but not trying to go crazy overboard and saying, let's fix it all right now. How about let's just try one thing or two things that I think we can get better at. And then we go play Angola and say, well, did we get better in this particular area? And then you try to start building, you know, off of that. I think I have a proven track record of of getting teams from point A to point B, point A being uh, we need improvement to point B, really competing at a high level. And so, um, you know, just off the top of my head, last year we got beat by West Noble. I'm not sure if you were at that game, Grant, last year. I was, yeah. Do you remember it? What happened? Uh, well, I remember that it was not your best game, and West Noble came out and had a pretty good game. And so uh, the Chargers took home the victory. They did, and they oh, waxed us. <laughs> and I, I remember – I, I looked over at the the clock and the clock's running. And I said, <laughs> What are you doing? It's there's somebody shooting a free throw and the clock's running. You wanna know why? It's a new IHSA rule that the clock runs when you're down thirty five. So we're down thirty five the West Noble in the third game of the year, whatever, fourth game of the year. And and then you take that team that got, I mean, just blasted by by West Noble, you take that team to the sectional finals, and, and you say um, there clearly was some guys that were buying into some concepts throughout the year that where we were improving, and uh, we just kept getting better and better and better to, to, to the point where we had a real chance to win a sectional championship. And so that's what we're going to do this year. Now, I think we started out at, at, a, at a little better spot than where we were last year, but if we can buy into getting better, um, it, it's going to be pretty exciting as we move forward. All right, looking forward to Angola here. It's the first away game of the season, and it's the second game of the season, um, and it's coming off that Fairfield loss. So what can we kind of expect here against Angola? Yeah, I mentioned it before. You know, we're just going to try to get better in some certain areas. And so we sat down, you know, as a coaching staff and, and really tried to pinpoint some things that it's like low-hanging fruit. Like what, what can we get better at right now? And what's going to be e what's gonna be the easiest spot for us to get better at? And I think we're going to come out against Angola and do that. we got to be able to move the ball – um, from side to side. we got to be able to move the ball uh, from from one side, reverse the ball, make a few cuts and screens um, before we take some of those shots. Against Fairfield, we were taking some quick shots, and it worked for us in the first quarter, but then we got stagnant, you know, maybe in the third quarter where we weren't moving the ball real well and we were just too easy to guard. So then we go one-on-one. -on -one. And so you go one-on-one, -on -one, that doesn't work as well as, you know, playing as, as a unit, you know, and so... Um, on the offensive end, we have to move the ball a little bit better. And then in conjunction with that, kind of like what I was talking about Fairfield, we have to establish some sort of inside game, you know, whether that's driving the ball, um, whether that's throwing it to a guy that's posting up or if it's getting offensive rebounds. There's three ways to get the ball inside, and we 
didn't do a particularly good job of getting the ball inside. We have to get the ball inside early. We have to move the ball early against Angola. And then on the defensive end, you know, in all honesty, we just got to get tougher. And we did some things um, um, well, but when you got three or four guys that are they're doing well on defense, but one guy is just, you know, not – uh, performing up to expectations, it, it really creates problems. And so we got to get five guys on the same page on the on the defensive end, and just toughen up a little bit. You know, we got to keep guys out of the paint, and then improve on our on our post defense. Angola is going to present some problems with with a big kid and a king. He was out last year with a shoulder injury, but he's going to be probably the, bigger than than what those guys were at Fairfield, and so. Um, they're going to get a chance to watch film. They're going to know us very well, and we don't have a, a real good idea of who Angola is. That's right, because it is Angola's first regular season game. Um, it's going to be your first away game, like Zach mentioned. Do you expect going away for the first time to present a new challenge for you? It always is, and clearly, you know, Angola is one of our furthest, you know, bus rides, and and so getting on a bus and being on a bus more than fifteen or twenty minutes or whatever, a half hour. You know, getting on a bus and, and going, you know, an hour, hour and 15 minutes or whatever it is to get to Angola um, and going through a different routine than you would do at home is, is certainly always um, worrisome to a coach because you don't know how you're going to respond to that. You know, are you going to be ready to go? Are you going to, you know, sleep the whole way there and be kind of lethargic, you know, when you're coming out? Um, because Angola is not going to be, they're not going to be lethargic and, and they're going to play a high energy type of basketball, whether it be attacking you on the defensive end or attacking you on the offensive end. I watched film this morning, um, actually yesterday morning now, um, and watch, you know, how they came out with, against us last year. And, and so um, they're going to play very aggressively. They're going to be in the passing lanes and trying to get you to turn the ball over. And again, another reason why we, we're going to need to get the ball inside is if they're going to play an aggressive style of defense, you know, we're going to have to get the ball inside. You kind of mentioned some height difference there. You said that they have a big guy. So how are you going to try to stop that? And on offense, how are you going to try to get around that? We're going to have to make a decision on how we're going to play the post, I think, first and foremost. What's the what's the easiest way to, to fix that? Um, you know, because when we played behind, we got beat. When we side fronted, we got beat. Um, and so we're going to have to make a decision. We're either going to have to play behind and push them out, or we're going to have to front the post. And if you front the post, you're susceptible to offensive rebounds. And so we're going to have to make a decision on, on what we're going to do in the post against their big kid, King. Um, they have another kid uh, that played last year for him. I'm assuming that he's coming back, about a six foot four lefty uh, that's long and lanky. So you can see the recipe um, um, that beat us on Tuesday uh, with Angola. Angola's got King and uh, the six four kid, the lefty. And then they got Dane Lance on the outside that is just probably one of the best shooters in the NACC. Um, and so you got a scoring guard, you got two uh, big guys underneath, and and certainly those are the things that we'll be talking to our guys about. This is just how we, this is exactly how we just got beat. Now we're facing another team that's got the same recipe, you know. And so can we get better? Um, and we'll have to make decisions on on how we're going to get better, and then we're going to have to go out there and execute against Angola. Yeah. So another thing we said. It is Angola's first regular season game. Do you think this will give you an advantage having a game under your belt? That's a good question, Grant, um, and, and it's a conversation every year. So would you rather be able to watch a team play and know their starting lineup, know their main players, know what they're running, or um, and the other team doesn't have a scouting report on you? But here's, here's the thing I talked about is that first game jitters. You know, the it's your first game. You move too fast, and – and so there's an advantage for us because we've got a game under our belt. And so we're going into our second game. We're already kind of, you know, 200 meters into a, a, a mile race. Um, and we're going to be better than we were on Tuesday night. And so Angola's coach knows that. Um, and our guys know that. But Angola's starting off their season. They don't really know for sure what they have. They're probably going to be a little jittery, you know, especially early in the game. Um, but they have a scouting report on us, so they know what we're going to do. They're going to have time, you know, to take a look at that game on Tuesday. They probably practice, you know, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and have a little bit of an idea who we are, who's going to guard who. And so, to me, I've always kind of said this going into the second game of the year when it's the other team's first. 
um, it's a wash. It's kind of a wash. You know, there's some advantages for us. There's some advantages for them. Um, but it, when it's all said and done, I don't think I've ever played in the second game of the year. When I was at DeKalb as a head coach, same scenario, we played Central Noble um, on Saturday night. That was their first game. Then I come here to Wawasi and we play in goal the second game of the year. It's their first game. So I've been through this quite a bit, and what I've learned is that it doesn't really matter. You throw the ball up, and by about the second quarter, it's just you're playing a ball game. All right, yeah, we certainly look forward to that matchup with Angola. If it's anything like we had uh, with the Fairfield game, it's going to be a really interesting game uh, and a really fun game to watch. Um, so that will conclude our preview of Angola. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the future of this schedule and kind of highlight some things and talk about uh, how we're going to get into this season later on. Um, we'll have more Coach's Corner Basketball Show on 93.7 FM The Mix and online at 937themix.com. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner Basketball Show. I'm Grant Flora with Zach Bowen and Coach John Everingham, and we've discussed tonight's upcoming contest with Angola but now I want to venture into how the future of this season is developing. Coach, we talked last week about these first few games of the season and their significance, but now that the regular season has officially begun and teams around the area are kicking things off, we might be starting to get a bit of an idea of how some teams are shaping up. Yeah, we, we clearly are focused on one game at a time, and, and we're really looking forward to, to getting over to Angola and, and uh, getting back on the floor after what we thought uh, – was a game that was going to play out differently at Fairfield, but that happens in, through, through, throughout the course of the season. But, um, you know, we're focused on Angola right now, but clearly we're going to have other games that are upcoming quickly. You know, we have a double weekend, I think, two weekends in a row. Is that correct? Uh, or maybe not, maybe a double weekend with Manchester, West Noble, and then we play uh, Whitco uh, the following Saturday. So yeah. uh, from a coach's perspective, what I like about that early in the season is that you you'll have – uh, at uh, 10 practices, you know, and so you're going to have, um, after we play Angola, we're going to have three games with Manchester, West Noble, and Whitco, but you're also going to have 10 practices in there too, which I think are going to be just as important as, as the games. And so when we get through the first couple games here, Fairfield and Angola, now we're, again, like I was talking about before, we're pinpointing some of the areas in which we need to get better at, and then we have time to get better at some of those things we get to practice and so um you know sometimes you get caught in the you know the the grind of January February and you got a lot of games you play Tuesday Friday and and it, it, it limits your practice time um because you don't want to burn the guys out um, um but not early in the season early in the season I like having practices and and so after games and so we'll have a full week to get ready for Manchester and and West Noble and then we'll have another full week to get ready for Whitco um, and see what sort of team we have leading into our NLC season. Coach, I kind of got a question there about that. Um, with the NLC season coming up, you know, you're looking forward to that, obviously. As you said, you're taking one game at a time, but what matchup in the NLC are you looking forward to the most here this season? Northwood. I mean, they're, I don't know if the rankings have come out yet. I think the IBCA rankings have come out. They're, um, there's 450, 430 schools in the state of Indiana. And according to those polls, they have the uh, 11th best team in the state of Indiana. And so um, I think, you know, when you want to be the best and you want to play the best. And so I think our guys are looking forward to that game, but we got a long way to go before, you know, we get to that. So then you think about rivalries and you think about, you know, um, having Warsaw come in here, you know, the first game of our NLC season and, and getting a chance to compete against them. And, and again, the, the exciting thing for us is that I think we're going to be, um, we're going to win some of those big games and, and, uh, we're going to have some really exciting moments and, and people are definitely taking note of who we are and, and how we're developing. But, you know, I hate saying this because I mean, it's true, but I'm just so tired of saying it, but we're still a young basketball team. You know, we bring, you know, a freshman off the bench, and he's going to continue to to play a little bit more. And Nolan Holsworth, and um, he's shown that 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 uh, uh, that he is somebody that can provide some good minutes. And uh, two sophomore guards that um, probably be two of our top three leading scorers. And then, you know, with uh, Smith and and Zebarth, you know, being juniors, um, it probably classifies us as a, as a young team yet. And so, 
Um, I try not to say that to the guys a whole lot. It's true, but I take a look at experience and how many games have you played, and 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 then I kind of throw the grades out the window in terms of being youthful. But you know, for us, we got a long kind of a, a journey together this season, and maybe over the next two seasons, and developing players. And again, you got freshmen like you know uh, Davis Everingham, uh, Michael Wilson, and Nolan Holswart. We got sophomores, uh, Weston Hoffert. Uh, Miles and Maddox and Everingham that are that are playing varsity minutes right now, and then juniors that are giving us good minutes uh, on the varsity. It sure makes for um, some pretty exciting thoughts that, that kind of float around through your head with, with all positions too, and point guards and shooting guards and slashers and, and big men. Um, and we got some big men developing on our JV right now in 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 Pike and Dallas Miller and Weston DeLong and Michael Wilson, like I mentioned. So. Um, we feel pretty good about where we're at as a program right now in terms of development, but we're still a little young, and, and what you're going to see is us start to win games, and it's going to kind of snowball into something pretty special, I think. All right, well, Coach, with the season starting, uh, I don't know if you look around at other results. Uh, from I know not everyone started this week. You know, Angola is still yet to play a game, but were there any results from around the area that stuck out to you? Well, you look at uh, Northwood and Lakeland. They're two sectional opponents, and I think they Northwood doubled up Lakeland in it was 74 to 37. Um, certainly something that you know you, that you keep an eye on. Um, I think Lakeland's going to be better this year, and and they just got blasted by by Northwood. and And the Lakeland coach is a good friend of mine, is a former teammate of mine, and and uh, we talked about you know that game just a little bit and how that went, but. Um, Northwood's got a, a sophomore. They got a brother combination in the with the Roush uh, guys, and and the younger Roush is a sophomore that scored 21 points against Lakeland. So certainly, yes, we we keep an eye on um, all of our opponents that we play, and and um, um, we'll keep an eye on you know like Manchester for example. I think they play Tuesday against uh, Lakewood Park, and that that's a game we'll attend and we'll kind of go over there and check them out. But they got an outstanding. Uh, lefty big man that I think scored 30 points against us last year. And so, um, you know, right behind him is Austin Kripe. Um, I think he was just voted preseason, you know, number one player uh, in our area through, oh, I can't remember the website there, but uh, um, but quite an honor for him. And he's he's earned it. He deserves it. He's a really, really good player. Signed at Bethel. Um, so we got, you know, two guys back-to-back that are, capable of scoring 30 to 40 points, honestly, both of them. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Kripe had probably – he probably could have had 50 last year against us, but I think he was at 25 to 30 points. And then the Manchester kid had 32 points against us. So um, we're going to be facing quite the buzzsaw next weekend with Manchester and West Noble. And so we'll be able to to get some film and we'll watch film and <clears throat> and put together a game plan against basically those two guys. Speaking of that double weekend, obviously you're coming off a game against Angola, and then that double weekend comes right up after. So how do you kind of get in that mindset of not playing one game, like per not one game per week, but you know, kind of get in that mindset where you play back to back games? Like how do you get focused into? Yeah, that? we well we do the same thing. Honestly, that's a good question, and and um, we we just focus on one game. You know, we so we spend the week getting ready for Manchester, and I think I even mentioned on the preseason show that. Um, it is my belief now whether it's true or not I don't know but um, I was told <laughs> by a high-ranking official <laughs> over at West Noble that they change their schedule because they're tired of losing to Wall C <laughs> and uh, they changed their schedule so they didn't have they could prepare for us all week so West Noble's got one game that week it's us they all they think about is us all week they talk about us and they absolutely drilled us last year and I told that high-ranking official I said well, that must have worked, you know, because you you took that Friday game away, and um, we got what we do. Honestly, I'll, we'll stick to the game plan. We'll stick on on trying to beat Manchester. Period. And so, um, if I was being totally honest, and that's what we're supposed to do, right? This coach show. Be I'll be honest. Give you a little tidbits that uh, maybe I, you normally wouldn't hear in other media outlets. But um, in the back of my mind, we're going to be getting ready for Cripe because the 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 nice thing about Manchester and West Nobles, they both they both have one really outstanding player, and so um, 
putting together a game plan to stop one guy. We'll probably continue that on on Saturday night against West Noble. And so, but none of the kids are really going to know that um, unless they listen to this show. So um, we'll be talking about Manchester all week, and then when we get through Manchester, then we'll we'll start to. Uh, talk about you know the matchups and and what we think West Noble is going to do to try to beat us too, and uh, West Noble is going to be good this year. Well, Coach, looking further down the schedule, you have a new game scheduled this year, uh, Homestead. You're going to go at Homestead. Um, so, were you just looking for another game, or was there a reason that you scheduled Homestead specifically? Well, I um, one of my good coaching friends is Chris Johnson. He's a Hall of Fame guy. He's won a state championship and. I coached uh, against him when I was at DeKalb, and um, we were hanging out together this summer and, and uh, started talking about maybe playing each other. And uh, Actually, two years ago, he wanted a two-year contract with us, and, and um, we, we weren't ready for that. Um, they had Lawyer Malloy, and we were talking about our rosters and who's coming up, and, and I thought it was a good time to maybe add um, – you know, our bigger school on our schedule and, and with our guys up and coming in just a little bit, uh, we'll go play them at Homestead this year and, and they'll come to our place in the following year. So it was a relationship that I had with their coach and, and trying to, you know, beef up our schedule just a little bit. And and again, it's all focused on Northwood, honestly. And so I, I'd be shocked if Coach Marsh at West Noble or uh, Coach Kyle at, at Lakeland or, or Coach Heinen at Fairfield um, they're not saying the same thing. They they all know Northwood is sitting in our sectional. And so what is it going to take to beat Northwood? That's what we're all trying to figure out. And so somebody has to do it. Uh, somebody has to knock them off. And, and so, you know, for us to schedule a, a really strong opponent like Homestead, that's just tr- the attempt to try to get us prepared for, you know, postseason play. And, and Northwood, honestly, is is that can we schedule one or two games where we think the level of competition is going to be that you know, and so I can go way back. I think we got a few minutes, but it was the same thing. At, you know, when I coached at DeKalb, but we we played, we beefed up our schedule, and and our record wasn't quite as good uh, going into that sectional. But you know, we we started to put together a game plan, and it was all centered around what we're going to do to beat Carroll, Fort Wayne Carroll, who was ranked in the top ten that year. And we just kept getting better. We played Northridge that year, that was twenty and zero, uh, and we lost. Um, but we 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 played them pretty tight for two quarters. So we started saying, hey, if we can do this for two quarters, we might be able to do it for four. And then we hit a last-second shot in the first round of the section to beat uh, uh, Fort Wayne Carroll. Um, and so that's what the idea is. The idea is you schedule tougher teams, you have good opponents on your schedule because we have a really good basketball team waiting for us in the sectional in Northwood. Coach, I'd like to point out something here. Unless the schedule has changed, it says that you have Northwood and Homestead back to back. That's another back to back weekend. I don't know if the schedule's changed, but if it hasn't, what do you think of that? Like, how do you prepare well, for that one? Clearly, that's going to be a tough weekend for us. But uh, but we'll see. Let's just see where we're at. You know, when we get to that point, you know, I I don't know quite yet. We got to win some games and we got to get some things dialed in. But I didn't want to play Homestead, you know, early in the season. You know, I, th- I thought, you know, a January contest. And, and, again, they have to they have to have openings in their schedule too. And so that's what we – we wanted to play them a week earlier, honestly, um, but um, – or a week later, not on the same weekend as Northwood. And um, But it is what it is, you know. You, let's go play. And, and, again, what happens in the sectional when you play West Noble on Friday and Northwood on Saturday, hopefully. Those are two really good opponents. You've got to be able to, to do things in your regular season that help prepare you for the postseason. So why not – you know, Northwood and, and Homestead back to back. Let's see how we can go from a uh, just a uh, you know going to be a knockdown drag out against Northwood on Friday. How do we respond to try to do that again on Saturday? This the day after, you know, win or lose against Northwood, we're going to have to go to to Homestead and and figure out who we are, um, and whether we have a great big huge win, and we're flying high on cloud. How do we get back down to a level where we got to focus on the next night? Or if we don't do so well on Friday night, how we pick up the pieces and, and go compete. you know. So I think it's going to be a great weekend for us, and there's certainly potential for an upset there. Yeah, so Coach, what it sounds like to me is that although you want to win every game that you can, the record is not as important as preparing yourself for the postseason and ultimately be able to take on teams like Northwood. There's probably fans out there or whoever is paying attention. They'll, they'll look and they'll judge us by our record. You know, and 
I don't judge our team by our record, and I think that's really important for our guys to understand. And so, yes, we would have liked to win our first one. We'd like to win all of them. But when it's all said and done, we're trying to compete. We do have a team that's going to be able to compete for a championship, and so that's what we're that's what our goals are. So whether that's the NLC, the the holiday tournament, you know, or postseason play, we want to build a team that that is uh, capable of winning, you know, championships and making runs in, in tournaments. And so. I, I'm I'm hopeful that that people hear that and they get excited. Uh, we, we might be, I don't know. We might be 12 and 10. I don't know what our record's going to be going in the sectional. We might be 14 and 8. Who knows? We might be 8 and 14. But what I think I can almost guarantee is that we're going to be ready when when the time comes. All right. Well, that's going to conclude our coaches corner basketball show here today. Uh, the Warriors will be back in action at Angola tonight, uh, and so definitely tune into that. Coach, we thank you for coming in today. We'll see you for that Angola game on 93.7 FM, The Mix.